My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast, and it's Biscuits and Bars Week. Yes, and while COVID delayed us last week, this week it means that I'm not at burlesque class tonight, and we can bring you the podcast a little faster while I rest up my tushy from the shimmying. Rest up the tushy from the shimmy? Yes. That's you know. that, that's the technical term that dancers use globally. We're mm-hmm. resting the tushy from the shimmy. Yes, <laughs> it, it, it's what you do when you're a burlesque dancer uh, just needing to look after your You're body. resting the tukish from the shim shim. <laughs> that's what you're doing? <laughs> that's what they do in Scotland. Resting, I don't know. Resting the tukish from the shim shim. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> no. thank you everybody for your feedback by the way last week. It was really good to be back and it was really mm-hmm. good that so many people were able to, to listen and enjoy, even though we were later than we would have wanted to be. And just not. 100% and coughing yeah. <laughs> and spluttering and a bit more distant on the on the microphone yeah. and then you know but hopefully then back to normal and well as, about as normal as we get yeah um, <laughs> so but I heard from a few people and again very nice of people to reach out we really appreciate it so keep reaching out letting us know if you're listening because it's nice to know that someone is um <laughs> so biscuits and bars Indeed. Um, I do like going to a bar, and if they serve biscuits, I think that's even better. I you mean, know? Any, any venue that serves biscuits. Like, you know, in the olden days, they'd have, what, like, jar of olives, cocktail onions, and bar, like, what, not bars, <laughs> pretzels. Yep. Did you know, I think it was Betty Ford was responsible for getting pretzels? Mm-hmm into bars instead of nuts oh no i missed that was a fever dream i had <laughs> sorry everyone i'm so sorry you've been watching Cause first you, wives cause i've been watching first wives this has been happening a lot over the past week COVID. Where i think i've actually like learned a new fact and i realized no that was just a fever but dream it's normally halfway through you telling me the fact yeah There's yeah been three or four times in the last couple of weeks that christy's uh, the, the last week, week yeah that christy's been in the middle of telling me this yeah. really detailed thing that happened and halfway through she pauses and goes no that's a fever dream because <laughs> i was there and i'm there going oh that's right and she i'm like no no she's not yes, betty ford that went was... around and personally that... <laughs> she spent time at bars so anyway God, here we go. anyway Let's get in. Let, let's get into things that are far classier, right? Yes. Biscuits and bars week. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. in biscuits and bars week, look. Normally, we comment on you know what what the hosts are wearing or or what the, the judges are wearing. But this week, mm. there's only one person we're going to comment on. Really, Jay Marmon, gotta catch, catch it, it all. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Mar doing his best Ash impression. Impression, mm-hmm. and I really hope. You finally break through for that big first big Pokemon um, battle win. Tournament, yeah. Um, he was really channeling Ash from Pokemon. He and was... the further down the episode we got, the more Ash-like he became. Exactly. I was expecting him to, like, kind of, I don't know, suddenly use the oven as his Pokeball. <laughs> and suddenly... <laughs> well, what was he? We get and, against, he gets to his fairy tale. I choose you. you. <laughs> and out pops Anne. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, Anne, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, okay that's one so yeah. what would if if everybody in there yeah. hosts judges bakers mm-hmm. this is one for everyone at home if they were pokemon yeah what would their attack be oh bruno's the butter attack for sure oh yeah bruno just but puts yeah. a there's a butter slick that just takes <laughs> out just take, or cholesterol and he just <laughs> bruno's Bruno's attack is cholesterol, and it just gets you in like thirty years. <laughs> it's a slow worker, it's but it's a... effective. <laughs> He's undefeated. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're listening and you pick anyone, any of mm-hmm. the bakers, any of the hosts, any of the judges, what do you think their Pokemon attack would be? Mm-hmm. Um, and what I like, I still, I still have to explain to people. By the way, we don't write this down and plan it because no. that's literally just off the top of my head. <laughs> so we cut to Rosie before we go anywhere, and she's like, "They like about you know biscuits or bars," and she goes, "I like a good biscuit, but I prefer a good a good bar." That's it. <laughs> Those are my thoughts. <laughs> First of all, never change, Rosie. Yeah. Secondly, that got funnier later on where she said, I don't drink, but I think I might take it up now. <laughs> you know, well, you, she, she's the, she just pops over to John's bloody bench. <laughs> it's all you know. up, well, apparently. You know what she might like about bars? What? The Betty Ford pretzels. <laughs> she doesn't go for a drink. She just goes for Betty Ford's pretzels. <laughs> Which are a thing. Look, I think I'm, I just assume I'm tapping into other dimensions. <laughs> you probably are. Yep. So anyway, 
Let's get to the first challenge. The signature was a meringue bar. Mm-hmm. Meringue bar. Which does sound like a, a type of bar that you would find and it's the style of dancing that happens there. It's like, like a meringue. meringue. It's, meringue. Yeah. it's a meringue bar. It's a meringue bar. You just have to come out with some flamboyant outfits and some maracas and away you go. <laughs> Barry Manilow in the background. Yes. <laughs> would meringue. No, we're dancing too much. Mm-hmm. No, what a royalty. Mm-hmm. Um, so you needed a cookie base, yep. meringue on top, whatever filling you wanted to, yep. two hours. Now, now this is where we got... Um, I was trying to work out... Because at first I looked and I thought that Bruno looked like Uncle Bruno this week. Like he was going to take you to the zoo. Yeah. Um, card, sort of cardy, but a stylish cardy. The st- mm. Stylish everything. And then I worked it out. If you look at a lot of these newer rappers, they don't dress like traditional rappers. They tend to dress far more like these sort of cozy, genteel grandpa sort of thing. Or if, you, or if you've seen pop star mm. Never Stop Never Stopping, Adam Levine in the I'm So Humble bit. Yeah. Um, Look, this is making sense because when you look at Lauren and where she's hanging out with her friends yes. knitting, I'm assuming they're the new kind of hoodlums. <laughs> they literally make hoods. <laughs> they, they, they make hoods out of things and they just go and keep people's ears and heads warm. <laughs> you know, we are coming up to the cold season in the Northern Hemisphere and they're just out there. Look at your ears. The only person in that in that pavilion taking care of their ears is Nigel. <laughs> Yes, which I'm sure he's still keeping his Manitoba cred. But, you know, the police officers come around and go, hello, girls, I hope you're not, you know, going to be hooding too hard today. And like, no, officer, just one hood each today. And he's like, would you like some mittens? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I worked, out, bombing, you know, I, worked, the- I worked out, I worked out that he was Beatmaster Bruno. But Did when you- they asked him about what he wanted in this bake... Mm-hmm. And he was talking about the cookie base, blah, 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 blah. And he goes, the filling. And this is exactly how he did it. Soft, tasty, sour, sweet. And it's like, he's a lyrical poet. And all they needed was Andre to just to come in then yeah. with like a, 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 cool, a cool lick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Soft and tasty. <laughs> sour and sweet. <laughs> anyway, so... We cut to the bakers, and John announces loudly that he's working with time. Now, I personally would like to feel that Was he worked side? that he worked backward from the pun. <laughs> so he went, "I'm working with time. What can I put time in? Shit, let me think. About that. <laughs> let me have a think. Let me have a think. Let me have a think. I know." Um, he called them black and blue bars. Now, mm-hmm. I'm going to say here, I'm Team John for this. Why is that? So why am I Team John? Simple. So blueberries. Oh, yeah. So time and lemon shortbread for the base. Good. Yeah. Blueberry mousse. And blackberry port jelly. So first of all, booze in a bake. Mm-hmm. But secondly, and far more importantly, mm-hmm. John is representing real berries. <laughs> Not made up berries. Not made up berries. Mm-hmm. Nobody, by the way, last week managed to come through and prove that sea berries are a thing. Things. So he used real berries, blackberries, blueberries. They're real. They exist. They're tangible. I'm Team John. <laughs> Look, I think he's possibly heard the podcast and go, I just don't want to piss them off. They got sea berries last week. No, no, no. He's we fighting can't... back. <laughs> he's a, he's a um, what's it called? A, a rebel. Ins- a berry rebel. He's a, he's a berry operative. He's in there <laughs> fighting hard against Big Berry. Yeah. <laughs> fighting for the little guy. Um... Yeah, because blueberries are so rare they need someone to stand up for them. Exactly. That's the Actually, point. you know what? They're going to be rare in Australia yes, they come are. summer because we got this um, bloody bee pest what's it called like a little bug thing in a bee a bee bug that is <laughs> infecting some bees and kills them it's, it's killing the good. good bees it's killing the good bees right so they put a ban on hives being moved around and it was just at the point they put a ban on bad bees they put a ban on bad bees and boo i can't think of another bee to put in <laughs> so so yeah so the summer blueberry crops couldn't get beehives moved to them to start the pollination process so come summer there's going to be a blueberry shortage in australia you know what that might mean Mm -hmm. we get saskatoon berries shipped out here they're not real so they'll never get here (laughs) you don't know that so what you're telling me is Mm -hmm. that is that blueberries were bad were badly impacted by bad bees yes okay well the bees weren't bad but the bad the bad bug bees bloody hell so the bad bugs in the bees um, we then cut to, to Chi. That's, that's um, Bruno's new beat. <laughs> the bad bug beat. Wait till he drops that one. Um, 
So, and then we cut to cheat. Now, mm-hmm. now, 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 they were talking about the tropical dream bars that they were making, mm-hmm. um, which were very sort of okay. So, first of all, Yuzu was there, but I was fine. I've told you, I'm okay yeah. with Yuzu. Pineapple yuzu, yuzu cheesecake, and a coconut mm. base. But but chi was interesting because they were very focused on putting... The coconut seemed to be their focus. Yeah. They were like, oh, I'm putting coconut in this, and we'll see how it works. Forget the rest of it. Just the coconut on the base. I'm, I'm a bandit for a coconut base. I think coconut, particularly desiccated coconut. We've had the desiccated coconut chat on this. And I know. I Do love they, that. They don't have desiccated coconut in... No, we had that conversation. It's not Canada, as commonly I've seen, yeah. used. Because we had that last year with the, the Lemingtons. Lemingtons. Yeah. Desiccated coconut scared people. <laughs> yeah, because like, mum would put it in so many things like Anzac biscuits. And yeah, because bloody... Australian baking, when in doubt, they just throw desiccated coconut <laughs> at it. Because <laughs> it keeps in the pantry. The main reason I think why Australian baking uses so much damn desiccated coconut is you just need something that's going to stay in the climate. It did mean when I played Vampire the Masquerade and someone came up with the term desiccation, like I knew what it meant because, yeah, we'll get to more role playing games. Well, we're about to. Well, funny you should say that because we're going to talk about Nigel now. So, Mm -hmm. because in the promo, they showed flames and fire and burning toast and everyone looking around panicked. Cut to the actual episode <laughs> where that's exactly what he was doing was burning toast. As you be- do. Because he was inspired by the smell and the, f- and the memory of burning toast when he was younger and wanted to put this in his bar. Who, who was burning toast that, like... Like, was it you, Nigel? Were you just a bit distracted burning the toast? Or was it your mum? I mean, if it was my mum, then definitely. Now, um, raspberry curd mm? with burnt toast crumb, which mm. actually sounds quite interesting as a concept. Well, I've seen burnt toast put in a few things. I think MasterChef, someone did it. I know they did a normal toast, but I think someone did a burnt toast ice cream from memory. Yeah. Or a, well, they, they, yes, possibly yeah. a if it's MasterChef, parfait. If it's MasterChef toast. Australia, someone's made a burnt toast ice cream. I can tell you yeah, that for a or fact. Or a parfait. Or, nice, or, or a panna cotta. <laughs> burnt toast, burnt toast, panna cotta has got to have been a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, now, more importantly, though, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm I'm going to, and he'll really hate me for doing this, but Aaron from the last series of Great Australian Bake Off last week mm-hmm. was like, I think I noticed D and D dice in the background. Never. You better believe you did, Aaron, because we 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 spotted that again, and we got a lot of D and D references in this one. Look, I just I just giggled because there's Nigel also up as a DM. He's like rolled a natural twenty, and I could just see the rest of the party going, "Oh, we're all fucked, and we're <laughs> so let's, let's just start writing new tunes right now." <laughs> um, <laughs> but it looked like what the ad inferred was that Nigel had rolled a one. On his toast making, <laughs> when in fact he did exactly what was planned. So you know his initiative check, his initiative check was, was granted. <laughs> we'll come back to that because yeah. we'll come back to some more Nigel D and D later. I think. Okay. Um, so Zoya, now, mm. now now Zoya, as Alan pointed out, was just taking the ideas from last week and rolling them into this week when she picked <laughs> the guava. Look, I actually don't mind seeing this much guava. I think it's quite cool to see something. You know, it's not a Saskatoon berry. Yeah. Well, I mean, look. <laughs> Or yuzu or matcha. It's not yuzu, it's not matcha. I mean, look, by, by week five or six, if guava's in there every week, I might start getting a bit sick of it. It might start becoming... No, start it might start becoming guava. It might start becoming the Davidson Plum of the series. It might. <laughs> See? See, you're like, oh, big guava. And then I'm like, Davidson Plum's in Australia. And you're like... Yeah, no, they'll everywhere. I'd like to see guava done in a few ways. So we saw it last week in the paste. Yeah. Um, and then boiled down into boiled to down. make the jam. Yeah. I'd like to see some maybe guava powder, like, you know, the dehydrated guava. It won't be as pretty as, like, the Davidson Plum. That's a nice bright, like, purpley pink. Yeah. It's- guava, guava. It just looked like you're just chucking dirt. <laughs> like you've just swept up the floor and you just got this guava powder. Guava in colour has so much potential and very little of it is ever realised. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't quite ever make it where it's supposed to be. Um, now, she was telling me the hibiscus shortbread and then the guava cheesecake. Lovely idea. That's a really mm. cool flavour concept. Um, mm. Now, now Rosie yep. went with the apricot and ancho, oh. um, which was a chamois curd. And that sounded amazing. Apricot, mm. ancho chilies. Yeah. And then she also went with the chilli lime seasoning as well. You know, if someone said to me, I'm going to redo apricot chicken and did it with the ancho chilies in it, I'm like, I'm here for it. You know, bring back the 80s with ancho chilies. Well, yeah, I get I love ancho chilies. I'm a massive mm. ancho chili but fan. But here we are in a, in a bar form. I also loved where uh, Rosie's like, 
you know, I'm being being really nice here. At home, I would be licking my fingers. And then she paused and went, <laughs> actually, people at home who get my baking, ignore that. I never lick my fingers in the kitchen. <laughs> it's not a bit of was it? <coughs> typhoid rosy. <laughs> typhoid rosy. Just cross-contaminating the world. <laughs> Now, Andre was making millionaires. Very helpful when someone wants chicken pox parties, though. Like, they're like, we get Rosie to make the cake. <laughs> now, now, Andre was making millionaire shortbread, or as we call it, or as or as we call it here, caramel slice. Yeah, great call. Um, and he was using that fruit. That's oh, I can't remember what it's called. Capacho. Capacho. That's Blake, it. you're welcome. That, that, um, <laughs> It's a Brazilian fruit, and they said it's got a bit of a bubblegumish hint to it, but also chocolatey. A bit chocolatey, bit. But but forget all of that. I'm going to come back to Andre in a minute because Christy gets some time here because yeah. then they cut to Andre at home, and he gets a new copy of Pride and Prejudice each like each year. That's brilliant, Andre. Now it's not my favorite Jane Austen novel, but it is a stand like a you know it's a go to, it's a comfort book, and I'm just here for you know seeing a bloke. Sitting down, reading his favourite book, and it happens to be Pride and Prejudice. Again, not my favourite Jane Austen novel. Sense and Sensibility, probably more up there for me. But one of the interesting things with Pride and Prejudice, which some people think is real, but, it, you know, it's a bit contentious, is that, um, oh, what's it called? Mansfield Park is apparently a spin-off of what would have happened to Lydia's child, you know. But I just don't see either, like, like the Bingleys, or maybe like the Aunt Bingleys, definitely, but not not like bloody Jane and or Lizzie, being a bitch to their niece. You know, I think they would have been quite a, a lot nicer and not have like a doofus little dog. Anyway. I really hope we get Andre on the podcast because I just think you two could talk Austin for a while. We can, and we can do the spin-offs as well. We've got um, the, the vampire, like the vampire Mr. Darcy. We've got Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Um, we can even maybe do a bit of a shallow dive into Sense and Sensibilities and Sea Monsters, I'm just saying. can also maybe then get a, an online game going of the card game, Marrying Mr. Darcy. Ooh, that's a good idea. There you go. Now... You all dress in Regency outfits. That's all you want. You want everyone in Regency. Mostly men with their calves, like a well-turned-out calf. Uh, back at the ranch, though. So back to uh, my focus, because my focus was where they mm. said about it's a Brazilian millionaire. And, mm. Anne, skin. <laughs> and Anne's comment was, I would love a Brazilian millionaire. And everyone <laughs> laughed. Now, Anne, I... Being the practical individual that I am, decided to do some digging for you. He's your wingman, Anne. Um, I am your wingman. I've got your back. I've got you covered. And um, unfortunately, a Brazilian millionaire is only worth 264409 Canadian dollars or 304074 Australian dollars. Wow. So, Our dollar's worth more than the Canadian dollar at the moment. So at, at the moment... Only for Brazil. At though. the moment, he's, he, he's, he's a quarter of a millionaire. Um, he might make some savvy investments, <laughs> or she. They, they, who knows? Yeah, they, they might make savvy investments. But yeah. I'm just going to put it out there that that you, you, you Brazilian millionaire, you could have picked a better exchange rate country. <laughs> um, and if you could find a better exchange rate country, then that millionaire might be worth it. You might double or even triple your money into Canadian dollars. Yes, but then if you go to convert back, you might lose. Yeah, but all you needed is in, in Canadian dollars. <laughs> I, I I feel like she'll be spending it in Canada. Okay, well, unless I mean, she goes to visit his I don't think family he, in look, the other country. I'm not, I'm not gonna. I, what if they I, go on a honeymoon? I'm not gonna besmirch a whole country, but I don't know if you really want to be incredibly wealthy in some parts of Brazil. It's a bit dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> so well, you might want to go somewhere else with that money. I also. Anyway, we won't get into human rights rants right here. Exactly, but, you know, we definitely well, won't. Let's keep it positive. Let's keep it in the bake-off shed. Lauren's doing a bake curd, and we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, no, there is one more outfit we need to comment on. Lauren's Lauren in Wonderland kind of look. I loved it. Yeah, she know? was very Lauren in Wonderland. And I was a massive fan of the lime earrings. They were very cute. They were very cool. Um she was making orange liqueur caviar. Now I've watched a lot of sorted food as they're making those bubbles, and they're, yeah. they're they're kind of the trend at the moment. A lot of people are making those, but they look they look really cool. And the idea should be they give that bang of explosion of flavour. But again, orange liqueur as well. So it's like you know, <laughs> contro. She's using contro. They just can't say contro. But <laughs> it's my favourite. And well done, Lauren. I think that you know, add a bit of lime and soda with that. Where you go? Well, she went with you know the, the idea of lime and tequila, 
Mm. And and a cayenne shortbread with that too. I like all of the spicy shortbreads. Mm. I'm a fan of the, the chili in the shortbread. I'm a really big fan of that. Did you know chili is not an actual flavour though? Mm. It's just a heat. It's yes, just pain. It's warmth. Yes. It's just it's just it's just kink in a bread. Like kink in food <laughs> form, sorry. Kink in a biscuit. <laughs> kink in a biscuit. You know? Chili is just kink in a biscuit. Okay. <laughs> um I did love the fact that she wrote a card at school saying that her mum's favourite food was margaritas. <laughs> Is there anything like that that you would have said about your mum? No. Uh, no, sadly, mum. No. My mum liked um, really bad sherry, like cooking <laughs> sherry. Like It was just one of those things. Like I know that she had it there for other reasons, like for actual cooking, but there would always be a little glass of sherry. Like she was very Fraser in when she was <laughs> the cooking sherry. Yes, yes, br- the cooking sherry. <laughs> as as Fraser <laughs> and Niles always broke out the cooking sherry. <laughs> Also, we had, of course, Christy. Veneer. Now, Christy, Christy made pride marzipan, which was incredible watching her make the layers. And she's like, this is a lot of work. And all the lady gays are just cheering <laughs> away going, that's our girl. Yeah, represent, you know. Especially when she then announced she wanted to make the best queer bar in town by doing amaretto sour meringues. <laughs> <laughs> Look, queer bars are some of the best bars in the world you know they although as Homer simpson pointed out they didn't have a fire they didn't have fire escapes <laughs> oh god no what just wrong. something's wrong with this something's wrong with this oh my god this lesbian bar doesn't have a fire escape enjoy your death trap ladies which first of all points out just how open and inclusive Homer simpson was he had no problems being in a lesbian bar he wasn't worried by the around around him he was worried about fire safety yeah but i didn't <laughs> Okay, so knowing queer history, I didn't know how deep that fucking thing cut because there was, yeah. like, a really, anyway... Big problem. Big problem with, with fires. Massive and, problems. And queer bars. and. But no, I, I like the idea that she wanted mm. the best queer bar in town in that form. It was very cool. Um, and I, loved- I went to a few queer bars growing up. And I can tell you there weren't a lot of biscuits, but there was a lot of other stuff going on. Um, amaretto sours? A lot of candy. Amaretto sours? Yeah, yeah, amaretto sours. That's exactly what we're talking sours. about. Exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. And as she said, I love amaretto sours and I'm really gay. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Line of the century. It really was. And then we, we go to, um, they, people start cutting out their bars. They then mm-hmm. cut to Joma, who's doing his um, mango custard peppermint and he had that lovely cucumber sort of top yeah the tri- it looked amazing anyway, the gel. cucumber i choose you yeah the gel that he put on top of it was really really cool mm-hmm. i love that pattern that he had there now then they come back to poor nigel who was um under pressure because he had to wait for everything else to be done before his meringue could happen why i don't know why can't you make the make your meringue and then just put it on top towards the i couldn't work that bit out mm. now he did decide to pivot at this point in time, and then he did some more bread, yeah, and put the bread because as he got the bars, it they were melting and they were they were just <laughs> collapsing. Yeah, there was, was no structural integrity there. Joe Mars come over and gone, mm, can't pass that. Can't pass that. Can't, doesn't get past the test. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen the the children's cartoon from the nineteen eighties, My Pet Monster, but <laughs> it looked like yes. it looked like My Pet Monster was melting. Um, <laughs> And so that's a, that's a deep cut, and I don't know if anyone listening to the show will get it. If you do, please, gifts in the chat. Um, but it looked like they were melting my pet monster. Oh. Or Telly Monster off Sesame Street. Oh, that's even worse. It's more disturbing, like, isn't it? Wow. Um, but he put the bread, so it was like you had this bar, and then you had a piece of bread, and then the meringue going on top of it. I was just there going, oh my God, is this, this isn't going to work. Meringue it's on bread. toast. It's meringue on toast. It's- which is, I'm, but then he clarified it with sugar toast, which yeah, sugar toast is which, fucking brilliant. Sugar toast is great. Oh. Um, and again, and, and a common theme that I've also noticed here, Chi running over to help other bakers. She yeah. did it in the first episode a couple of times. She, they, did it, they did it in this episode a couple of times. But it's good because Nigel helped Rosemary last week yep. and then he's come and got a bit of help this week. Yeah. You know, just the love going through the tent. No, they did a really good job. Well done. Well done, Chi. So, the judging. Mm. Um, Nigel. At first look, I thought that was s'mores. Um, it was Bruno. And he said, they're not good visually. However, the flavor's great. And as Cute. Kyla said, the burnt toast makes sense with the berries. So, mm-hmm. like, it worked. Um, Christie's. They said it was stunning. They were getting the amaretto. The lemon was perfect with it because the lemon gave, in Kyla's words, good pucker. <laughs> you got to love it when you get good pucker from a gay bar. <laughs> What? 
I don't know. I'm, I'm talking, talking about people. lemon in the gay bar. That she's, that, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, because there's so many lemons in the gay bar. Exactly. Mm. Um, lots of sour people. No. Um, <laughs> they said that Rosie's was a Mexican fiesta. And I'm like, no, they're just, they're just bars with a bit of chili in them. Um, the cookie was very buttery. Mm-hmm. They were said you get the ancho first, mm-hmm. then you get the apricot, which was really nice for the balance. Mm-hmm. And as um, Kyla said, that was a very complex flavour balance. Mm-hmm. Um, John's had a, a beautiful colour, but they said that the meringue just needed that little bit more of a kick. Yeah. Just, um, you know, go g- maybe pop over to the gay bar, <laughs> see if you can borrow a few lemons, just to see if you can kick it up. Zush it, zush it a bit. Yeah. Um, Lauren's, the basic summary of Lauren's was, this is very margarita, and if this is your mother's favourite food, you've done it justice. Yes. <laughs> you've done your mother's love of margaritas justice. Hold on, I'll just rephrase that. John, go to the gay bar on ladies' night. <laughs> 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 then you might find a few more lemons. Okay. Mm-hmm. Joe Ma. Yes. Uh, they said there were lots of good colour and symmetry. Uh, individually, the ingredients were good. And we said there were a lot of really cool elements there. Mm. But Kyla's only comment was that together they didn't quite blend. They seemed to all stand mm. out on their own individually instead. Yeah, you got to make your Pokemon work as a team there in the bar. It's the hardest part about any raid. Yeah. Um, whenever you're putting a group together for a raid, you've got to have the right, num- right combination of, you know, Pokemon Go players out there know what I'm talking about. Um, Zoya, they said that it looked stunning. The cookie was excellent, but the cream cheese that she had there took, took away from the cookie a little bit. Mm. Um, Andre, they said the base and the caramel was excellent, and you did get a hint of bubble gum, but the balance was out, so it was really sweet, the whole thing. Bugger. And that's, look, it's a hard part with caramel slice as well, yeah. is that caramel slices tend to be a little bit sweet if they go wrong, even yeah. just by a teensy bit. Um, and then cheese, they said um, that, that they were adorable, light and delicate, and Pina colada all the way. Mm-hmm. So a really nice intro, a really nice start to, to, to bars and biscuits week. Look, they're some of the best looking bars I've seen in a while. You know, not that I've been able to go to bars. Well, that's why we haven't seen many bars. Um, went to one last week or two weeks ago. So I got and fucking COVID. And that's where, hence, hence the COVID. Yeah. Um, so, so maybe avoid those bars and get bars These ones instead. Yeah. Um, like Anne, shut, 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 shut. That's also... Uh, I think Betty Ford would also endorse most of these bars. Maybe not the ones with amaretto sours. Only the ones with pretzels. Yeah. So, <laughs> technical. Mm. The technical is Alfajores. Yes, and you were very excited about this. You're like, I know these. Yep, so... And I'm like, D- yes, I do too. Yes, yeah. so these were in last season's Great Australian Bake Off. Mm-hmm. The technical for Biscuit Week was Alpha Hottis. Um, yep. Now, a couple of differences, and the recipes out there, I'll re-share it on Twitter, mm-hmm. um, the Matt Moran recipe, the Australian um, the Australian judge, who put out his recipe and what they did. But the difference was they had to make 36 here in two hours. Yeah. In Australian, they made them do eight. Mm-hmm. But a couple of key differences. First of all, they had them do half-dipped, half-clear. Yeah. Um, so it was only one type of biscuit, but half and half in terms of the covering. The other big difference here was they made their dulce de leche on the stovetop. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this, it was a pressure cooker dulce de leche, which means you've got more scope to make a, a larger batch of dulce de leche. Yep. Secondly, you can also do more biscuits. Yeah, and you can do two kinds of biscuits as well, which, which is, is kind of cool. One was lemon and one was orange. Yeah, I just feel like it's Canadian have a bit of a flex on Australia there, going, hmm, we see you, all right, we give you 36 and a pressure cooker, bitches. And that's exactly what it was, and it was in no way, shape or form casino art sponsorship. But not at all. No, but you've got to fucking do stuff for the sponsors. How else are we going to get these? No, I have no problem. And, and, I, know, have no, I have no problem with I them know. doing it. It's just that's... Probably and, why. Let's just say, but it's cool because if you were baking at home, mm. would you want to stand over the stovetop or would you want to do it in a pressure cooker? A oh, pressure cooker for sure. 100%. And, well, it might you know, it's, some time. <laughs> it's, it's a step up from just having a cuisine art <laughs> bag on the end of a pan handle <laughs> or, while you're making it. Or even worse, maybe having, I don't know, fresh pineapple. a pineapple sponsor with a bag of their pineapple in front of the fresh pineapple you're cutting. Um, <laughs> don't know what show that might have been, Kiwi, looking directly at you. Anyway, moving on. Um, do, uh, so, Afajores are from Argentina. Mm-hmm. Um, as, they, as Bruno said, they needed 
coconut on the vanilla ones. Yeah. Um, the cookie should also be almost cake-like in its consistency. Mm-hmm. Like, it shouldn't crunch. It's it's a melting sort of cake style. They seem to be more like, you know, when you get a Jaffa cake? Like yeah, a bit more like a Jaffa cake. Be, yeah. And that, again, there's a whole, literally a legal argument in the United Kingdom over Jaffa cakes. Why? Because it was, are they cakes or biscuits? Because one's under tax and one's not. What? So they had a whole argument over what a Jaffa cake is. It's Hold deep, on. It's a deep cut. What? Why... Why is one bake school bloody, like, like tax exempt? Like, I'm sure they're still taxing tampons over there, but apparently some kind of baked good is getting an exemption? Oh, so, my God. So the actual argument... So there was, okay. a whole, there was a whole argument on... It was an old thing. It was under that. So they were making them in 1991 sorry it all came up because under their their vat over there so customs and excise ruled jaffa cakes to be biscuits because they're partly covered in chocolate and therefore the standard rate but the cake manufacturers manufacturers argued they weren't and it was about size it was also put to the court that they were a snack with the fingers whereas cake could be eaten with a fork there was this whole back and forth over how you actually eat them um McVitie's, the company won it and they were recognized as chocolate covered cakes so what? Jaffa cakes are worth <laughs> they sell 1.19 billion pounds worth of Jaffa cakes. Jesus Christ. No consumer tax. What? None. Why are there because the on excise on cake? Excise puts an excise on biscuits because they can be stored over time longer, whereas cakes are usually far you eat them far quicker, so there's not the storage, so that's why it's a, a different excise. This is just Go look it up. It's an amazing fact. That is some hard I never core. thought I'd get to bring it up. And I'm so pleased that out of nowhere I've got to bring that up. But the whole excise tax thing on Jaffa Cakes is insane. It literally went to court. Okay. They had to fight over what they were, cakes or biscuits. And it wasn't one of those internet, you know, is a hot dog a sandwich kind of things. <laughs> this, this went to British legal tradition. Jesus um, Christ. So anyway... Let's get back to here because they got told they needed to pressure cook the condensed milk to make the to make the dulce de leche, mm-hmm. but they were given absolutely no time. Like like you just put, pop it in and away. So you like go. Rosie was starting on twenty minutes, I think. Um, yeah. Sixty five is what you should have been doing. Mm-hmm. But so they all had to, to guess. At this point, John turns around and starts praying to the baking gods. And let's face it. The men's been giving out enough offerings to the baking gods by way of booze <laughs> that they should be responding by now. They really should. Um, so it's one of those ones where everyone was sort of guessing. So you're guessing how long the, the dulce de leche needs in the, in the thing. You're guessing how much orange, orange zest and lemon zest to put in things. As John put it, no one measures vanilla extract anyway, so I'm just going to eyeball it. <laughs> yes, you just go with a whim. You know, just feel that extract. It was very much a, a technical where everyone sort of knew what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But was guessing a little bit <laughs> it was now i'm just gonna break from the technical here because we haven't done that enough apparently now you might have heard in the background i don't know if it was picked up but there was a curlew um tweeting away well it's like Ooh, that's a curlew voice, noise there we are thank you curlew for coming in on time um now curlews are a bird that marks spring in sydney um you don't hear them for the rest of the bloody year but they come out this time and annoy the shit out of people. I quite like them myself, but apparently some people, maybe because it's at 5 a.m., get a bit shitty. But I'm using that as a segue over to the birds that we've seen this. Now, there's so a little brown Chrissy's bird. Chrissy's bird corner. Yeah. So they, they went to a little brown bird that was on the on the ground. Now, I put up Canadian little brown bird and that's nothing, came not, up. nothing relevant came up. <laughs> um now, I believe, and I did have a response on Twitter that the yellow bird, because they showed another one, yep. it's possibly a goldfinch. Mm-hmm. It's got, it's yellow, it's got black wings, and it's got like eyebrows like yeah, Eugene there, Levy. There was another one, yes. Yeah. It's, it, it was very Eugene Levy, you're right. <laughs> like, that's, that's all. I'm going, it's got eyebrows like Eugene Levy. It has to be a Canadian bird. <laughs> <laughs> it was very polite. Yes. Um, yeah, so some some good bird action. Um I got a bit lost. I don't know if there are other birds up there. I might have another rewatch, see if I get any more birds. But um, 
if, right. if, if you did notice a bird and you want to tell Christy what it was, please tweet us. Tweet us back. It's appropriate to tweet us. Oh, I think I mentioned in the other podcast we had those fucking annoying birds show up. Yes, I got an ID on them. Yes, the, the bird. They're a wattle bird. Okay. So, so yeah, we did have a bird show up in the middle of the week, and Christy's big big on birds, as we know, and um. Yeah, they were very annoying. We didn't know what they were. No, they have like a chuckle noise. Um, and they're hanging out with the Australian miners, and they kind of look like a bigger Australian miner. But I'm like, mm, I don't really like your call. But you know, welcome to the area. Um, yeah, and luckily a friend of mine is a mad twitcher and was able to identify it for me. Just going, they make this weird noise, and she's like, oh, is it a wattle bird? <laughs> they, they make they make this weird noise, which cuts back to Joma, who said. I'm always screaming on the inside. Which is, <laughs> look, I feel like if you ever needed a, a, a mantra for the COVID times, mm. I feel like Joma's I, I'm always screaming on the inside yeah. is a very perfect summary of the COVID times. Yeah, particularly post, like, you know, now we're getting into later stages of COVID times, yep. you know, like the, the kind of like, we're learning to live with it. Well, not really, because it's fucking annoying. No, but anyway. Um, Th- that we are. We're just at a point where we're all screaming. Like, particularly in Australia, you know what we've got coming up? Another fucking summer of rain. Just going to have a little bitch about that. It's going to it's flooding up on the northern bloody rivers of S- Sydney at the moment. Just, yeah, just having a bit of a rant. Because I won't get to fucking swim at the beach. Just pissed off. Um, so, back at the ranch. So Anne points to the <laughs> um, pressure cooker and goes, I've never seen this in the technical, which I did feel like was going to be a gateway to talk about the benefits of pressure cookers. Mm. And Nigel didn't bite. He just went, yeah, I'm so lucky. And then just went, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I feel like before we got our air fryer, you, the pressure cooker was your baby. Like I still was, love the pressure cooker. Yeah, you do. You do good, good stuff in the pressure cooker. Pie fillings. Good, just, good pie fillings, good casseroles, really nice yeah, casseroles. Good casseroles. But um, come on. Oh, the, the, the air, air fryer. fryer. Fuck. Air fried bacon, man. It's, it I'm, is, I'm here for the air fried bacon. Oh, my God. Um, it's just, it is just everything. When I bought it, and I had to justify why I bought it, because it's yeah. another appliance and I have lots of them. And when I bought it, I did say to Christy, you, it'll be the best bacon you've ever had. And she's like, it'll want to be. And it is. It is. So, you know, yay, mm-hmm. win. Um, then we got the impression of, then we got the, the timestamp of um, how long to bake everything for. And the timestamp was bacon till done. Yeah, that's, that's um, hand, handy. Um, it seemed like most people got that instruction correct. And that was when they, they then cut back to Joe Ma, who did what I referred to as a Bruno Mars impression. <laughs> um, Meets Bob Dylan. Yeah, it was... <laughs> <laughs> I think he was trying to like add some like... So you've got and Andre's dulcet tones. You've got um, Br- Bruno with his like, you know, um, like beats and stuff. You've got, you've got then, Rosie singing about um, playing with her food. food. Yes. And then Joe Ma comes in just to add a, a different texture I like, to the... Yeah. Um, I've got a nice spicy hook for you. <laughs> so we then get to the, the biscuits all come out. That's all fine. And then they start tempering the chocolate. Mm-hmm. Now, now Andre, unfortunately for Andre, Andre gets to be the person who does the sound bite that always makes me marvel where he's like, I have attempted to temper chocolate before. It didn't quite work most of the time. Sometimes it did, but most of the time it didn't. Again, every I feel like every week we have a moment where we're like, bakers, listen to us and you'll go far. Tempering chocolate. Do it in the microwave. If you are going on Bake Off. Yep, learn to do it. Know how to temper chocolate inside and out because yep. you're going to have to do it at some point. And especially inside of... The pavilion, oh, which is ridiculously, bandit. which is also ridiculously hot. Oh my gosh! Like what I would do is go to your jit local gym, just take your. Well, he's your, a personal trainer. He's so a personal trainer. Should have been easier. You should have been in the sauna trying to temper chocolate all along, dude. You could have you know? used it. Yeah, you know, you like pavilion. Oh, got this sorted. You know, I can temper it in a bloody sauna with six men hanging around talking business because that's what I believe they do. That's exactly what they do. Yeah. Business meetings. Um, <laughs> so we then got three comments at the end that sort of, I, th- I think, summed up everybody's view of the whole thing. We got Rosie who said, regardless of what it looks like, it'll be Dolce de Leche. Mm-hmm. That, that's one. Two, Christy, they're sloppy, but they're here, which is what people often say when we turn up at parties. Yep. yep. Here they are. We Christy, turn up Christy, somewhere, they're sloppy, sloppy but, but they're, they're here. here. <laughs> um, and then Lauren, if these are tempered, then good luck getting them off this. <laughs> All of those three statements, I think, sum this up quite nicely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the judging. Chi, 
They said that they were clean and consistent, cooked properly, nice lemon flavor. The chocolate glaze was a little bit of a struggle, but really good orange flavor. Mm-hmm. And the chocolate glaze became a big, big, big problem for everyone. Yeah. Andre missed the lemon completely. The chocolate was very sticky, and they also he also, he also put coconut on where there was no coconut required. Yeah, well, he, he just read an Australian fucking Women's Weekly recipe and went, I'm adding extra coconut, because exactly. that's what you do. And they said that Christie's were starchy a little bit, so... Under. Yeah. That was the lemon ones. You got but that. Good, but good lemon flavour. <laughs> of course she's got the good lemon flavour. She's been to the ladies' night at well, the they, day bar. All the puckering. Yeah. Um, but they did say as well, though, that her her chocolate was messy, but the orange ones were well baked, but they wanted more filling on those ones. Um, Lauren's uh, dulce de leche wasn't cooked enough, and the cookie was a bit too crunchy. Also, the chocolate ended up a bit more fondue. Was the way uh, they described it. There was no sticking, you know. Obviously, it wasn't tempered there, but yeah, you there know, you at least they could pry she gave, it apart. She gave herself away. Yeah, <laughs> she <laughs> warned these them. Are tempered. <laughs> she <laughs> warned them. Um, Nigel's were very uniform and had great dulce de leche. Mm-hmm. Um, Joma, they said that the dulce had a really nice shine to it, good texture. Chocolate had issues, but the flavors were really good as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Zoya's, they said, had a really good dough, but the dulce was under. Issues with the chocolate, messy but very tasty. Uh, Rosie's, also what they say about us when yeah, we go to parties. <laughs> messy but very tasty, yeah. Uh, Rosie's had a lot of a, a, a lot of dulce de leche on top. Mm. She'd gone with a different plating form to everyone else. She drizzled it across. <laughs> Look, Rosie! It's not quite throwing bacon at it. It's close, though. Um, the, the chocolate wasn't quite set, and the flavour was a bit minimal for what they were hoping for. Um, John's were also inconsistent, not crunchy, no lemon, chocolate issues. The dulce was grainy, but the, the baking was better on the second one, so something went right. <laughs> look, Christy, I think you're going to have to take your brother John out, you know, to ladies' night and just get him to at least start to appreciate the lemon flavours in this world. So, you know, just from a baking perspective. So, from last to first, mm. uh, Rosie was last, then Lauren, Andre, John, Christy, Zoya, Nigel, Jomar in second, which was a big push up for him. Yep. And Chi first. Oh, just, she's just brilliant. I just bloody yep. love her. So, Chi absolutely crushing it there. They're amazing. So, before yes. we get to the showstopper, yep. my segue. Okay. The Robin Hood commercial. Now, <laughs> now we we get to watch the fine commercial. I know all about the dairy farmers of Canada now. Um, yeah, you know, it takes a special kind of person. And I figured it out. You have to be Canadian and a dairy farmer. That's a very special kind of person right there. <laughs> um, and have no screen presence whatsoever. Exactly, none. You clearly not be an actor. No, no. You, clearly there's no actors in that commercial. No, um, but that's what makes... A Canadian dairy farmer, a Canadian dairy farmer. Exactly. So, the Robin Hood commercial. Now, not mm. the one that some people have seen with you know past bakers, Colin, etc. Um, Amanda, your cousin, is in one. Yes, yeah, she is. Um, they were doing um, almond flour. They were indeed. Almond I'm talking oil. about the mm. one with, which is designed to encourage all those amateur bakers out there to give it the red hot college try. Now. Yeah. Apparently, she's good enough to crack an egg with one hand. I mean, I'm a bit dubious about that because you don't want shell on it. And, like, she's cracking it one-handed on the side of a pan. And well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it's guaranteed to, be, to shell. It's one hand on a on a bench, on a flat surface. You can do that. On a pan like My or nephew like that, does that. Gonna crack he, it. he does not get it in the bowl. At all. At all. But he can do it one-handed. But my biggest problem with this commercial is not the cracking the egg one-handed because, you know, that's very possible and very plausible. Mm. But she then turns around and turns the cake tin upside down and shakes it in midair. Who pulls the cake out of the oven and goes, let's get this cake out now, and just starts randomly shaking a tin upside down? Well, when you're a shit baker like me, love, and and it does stick to the base. Yeah, but you don't start with that. That's a later tantrum. (laughs) Whereas she pulls it out of the oven, turns it upside down, and just flicks it. Just, just straight shaken. I mean, look, I, I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to encourage those who might not be the classiest bakers to give it a go because you're all bakers deep at heart. I get that. But maybe don't have her take the cake out of the oven and fling it from the pan upside down and just, and way off it. the bench. Look, <laughs> maybe she's a basketballer and she's there doing a bit of shake and bake. What's going to happen? Yeah. What's going to happen when the cake hits the bench? It's <laughs> collapse. It's how the cake crumbles, Christy. It's how the cake crumbles. But you know what? You don't have to pay tax on it if you're in England. <laughs> exactly. Ha ha. Showstopper. Um, yeah. Fairy tale made from cookies. 
I'm here for it. I I am I like fairy tales. I particularly like the like the earlier versions. The really um, brutal ones, yeah. Yeah, anyone who loves good retellings or, or deep dives into fairy tales, brilliant author, uh, Australian author um, called Kate Forsyth. She's written some brilliant ones, one called Bitter Greens based on the Rapunzel story. Um, what else has she written? Um, the Scarlet Thread. Um, and Anyway, she's written quite a number of them and they're brilliant. I can just – and she's done – she does a lot of podcasts and stuff like that about fairy tales and her research into it. So cannot recommend her enough if you like a good fairy tale. I thought it was a really mm. I thought it was a really cool idea actually because yeah. it gave you the ability to have the the really pretty bake and the three D yeah. bake. Yeah. But at the same time you could you can and you could put a bit of your personality into it as well. Absolutely. Look, you know, we got a bit of Sca- Randy Scandy action with a bit of uh, the the goats with the three Billy. I love the three Billy goats gruff. Billy goats gruff. That was one of my favourites growing up. Mm. You know, I just I just felt for the troll though. Um, yeah, well, we're, we're going to get in, we're going to get let's get into it, shall we? Because okay, because I, I feel like we're going to have a moment during um, this, but or several. So there had to be th- had to be three dimensional. Mm-hmm. They wanted the engineering, and you needed two different types of dough in there. Yeah, so that was important. So Lauren did the three Billy Goats graph, mm-hmm. um, and as she pointed out, I started randomly learning Swedish as opposed to something else useful that I could do. Now, we d- we beg to differ, Lauren. Swedish is very useful, particularly if you get into Eurovision or mm. IKEA. Oh my God, you will know what a half and fluffer is. I like knowing what a flugel gurgle is. Yeah, because I don't want to get it home and I don't know where to put the flugel gurgle. And like Lauren could be like your IKEA Sherpa. She can like take you there and, and tell like, you how to get out. <laughs> that too she can because it takes forever to get you've got to go through the hall of meatballs <laughs> you have to go through the hall of meatballs um she also went with the with the with the pepper cacao, which is the um swedish ginger snaps now i really like the swedish ginger snaps they're the ones you know the the ones you can buy here in the red box the ends oh, yeah, yeah they're the swedish ginger snaps i love ones. swedish ginger snaps mm. um mm. and also an almond shortbread which i'm fine with i'm ambivalent on an almond shortbread but i love a swedish ginger snap <laughs> um now John, yeah. Now John did the fairy door. Now well, let's get into the <laughs> let's get into this one. So I'll go through what the bake is, and then yeah. we'll go into the fairy door story. So mm-hmm. oat cake base, and then a kranza kake. For those of you going, I've seen that before. Uh, International Week season three, Canadian. Yeah. Yes, you have. <coughs> also, poor Hollywood did it on British as well, but who cares? Canadian. It was Canadian season three. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Newfie fairies. They sound like they, they they're like they're old school fairies. They're they they're pre Disney fairies. They're pre Tinkerbell fairies. Love it. Here for it. But bread, like, is that an offering or what you have to put on the ground to get home? Or? It's no. Well, it's just, he just said that you need to have the bread in your pocket. Um, mm-hmm. It's an Alanis Morissette lyric. Um, oh, she's Canadian. I've got one bread in my pocket, and the other is holding off a scary fairy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's. I, I think it's great that you know his grandmother was making sure that you know he's going out to pick berries and he she's making sure that he's not going to get taken by fairies. Like I just don't think enough grandparents these days take the um, the. This is the welfare the, of their the welfare grandchildren of the children seriously? seriously. You know, they're all like, you know, look both ways when you cross the road, but no, like maybe a bit of iron Let's, in your in your pocket or some bread in your pocket will keep the fairies away. I mean, look, it's it's very easy to look out. For maybe the, their bread's high in iron, and that's what's doing it. Possibly, it's very easy to look out for the obvious. You know, the obvious. Maybe they're gluten intolerant fairies. <laughs> So the fairies can't handle gluten. The, the Newfie fairies can't handle gluten. <laughs> I mean, look, of all of the weird theories I've ever heard about baking, mm-hmm. and all the weird things I've ever heard about Newfoundland, yeah, fairies that are gluten intolerant is not in the top ten. No, I really want to go meet these gluten intolerant fairies, mm-hmm. and you know, I will go pick berries for you know. Obviously not your grandmother, John. I assume that she has loved, gone to the, I, through the fairy door. I loved the speed, by the way, mm. at which Kyla was like, we better go back some bread. <laughs> um, now, Rosie. Rosie mm. was using gingerbread um, and she was trying that creepy floor, that patterned floor, marbling on the floor she was going yeah. for. Which so was she was amazing. going for the, the swans? The 12 the dancing 12, princesses. Oh, 
You know, that's a great one. That's what um, Swan Lake's based on, I believe. Yes, but another one about men coming and stealing people. Oh, look, but most of the fucking, like, fairy tales were. They were kind of like, girls, <coughs> don't open your legs and have sex and enjoy yourself because men will steal you. And hang on a minute, shit, hang on a minute. And you'll end up in the... Hang on, by the way you're telling that story... Yeah. Lauren Hill's That Thing is a fairy tale. <laughs> girls, you know you better. Watch, Watch out. out. Some guys, some guys are only about that thing, that thing, that thing. It's a fairy tale. So Lauren Hill was essentially writing a song. The Brothers Grimm. The Brothers Grimm. She that second it. verse was dedicated to the brother with it. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I'm stunned. I've just worked it out. Lauren Hill is writing modern day fairy tales. She is. Why is she so good? Look. You know, a lot of modern morals actually don't fit into to past fairy tales because a lot of them were, yeah. I like this a lot from Kate Forsyth, um, they were built on like older myths and yeah. kind of, you know, oral traditions and stuff. Mm. So, um, you know, they advance over time and we get newer, like, okay, 1950s Sleeping Beauty getting a kiss with, you know, while she's asleep without consent. Okay, back then. These days, pff, you know, that's not consent, fellas. So... You know, th there is evolution to morals, but I, I just don't think there was enough blood and gore no. in these in these fairy tale bakes. I get it. We're going for pretty. We're going for whatever. But why didn't someone do like like biscuits that were Cinderella's foot and the Cinderella's like stepsister's feet, which are being chopped off to like her toe was chopped off to fit into the glass slipper. Like that'd be great. Like a bit of red ice malt, a bit of jam. Coming down the side. That would have been fantastic. Like some of the really gruesome parts of the Brothers Grimm, mm -hmm. you could have some really good stuff with that. Although, just to get in there, and before we move to the, okay, I wanted the next one, but just quickly, um, Rosie was using a butter cookie with raspberry ganache. Now, see, raspberry ganache, you could have made those swans bleed. You're quite happy to make the swans bleed. You're quite happy to cut off the foot with the sh in the shoe and blah 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 blah. Yeah, why? So she did Hansel and Gretel, which in the oven edition. Your take. Look, here's this woman, right? She's gone, fuck you all. I am going to go live in the woods. Like, fuck the world. Um, and she's like, obviously, I don't have any building materials, but I've got all this confectionery, so I'm just going to build my house out of it. And um, that's a lot of skill. That's a lot of skill. And it doesn't melt in the fucking rain. Or if it does, she's having to rebuild her house every, every time Every time it rains. And it, like, if you're living in a Bavarian forest, that's a lot of rain. rain. Yeah. And these little shits come along, like, oh, we're lost. Our parents gave us away. And they started eating her house. It's like, dudes, you could have, one, knocked on the door and asked. Like, that. that's the thing. She was obviously home. Um, and, like, this woman doesn't have children, so I don't think she quite understands rearing children that, you one, don't put them in cages. But maybe she, you know, she went there because she was a cannibal and didn't want to hurt people, but here's some food just rocking up on her doorstep. I mean, my, my, my counterpoint, my, my mm. one counterpoint to that. Yeah. Um, so she didn't have the building materials to make a house. Yeah. She did have the building materials to make a cage. Yeah, like obviously there's enough metal to make a cage, but not enough to make all the nails for a house. And you don't need, you know, like maybe she likes trees. I mean, it's plausible. It's plausible. Yeah, I'm she just... obviously had a lot of sugar cane. I just have to. I, look, I have to. <laughs> a lot of refined cane. sugar. I'm on the um, witch's side in this. Yeah. I feel like she gets a really rough. These people come to her house, yeah. eat her house, and then like you know, they they throw her in an oven. They do, but there is a a meme or like a Facebook post going around at the moment um, that is about how that tale came about. Which is interesting because it's bread week next week, and this would make for a very interesting bread week challenge. So, apparently, there's a Slavic tradition called Perepekanii or something like fluent. that. She's oh, fluent. Oh, it's basically a rebaking of a child. So, if a child wasn't thriving, they'd essentially cover the child in bread dough mm -hmm. and as the yeast rose, like they didn't cover its nose or its mouth. Yeah. They'd put it in a warm oven or by the fireside yeah. to kind of encourage the yeast to to thrive. And they'd do this three times and each time they'd like remove the yeast from around the child's yes. airways. And this was supposed to... Give the child a yeast infection. 
Yes. That's and find exactly out if they're gluten intolerant. Exactly. And if they were gluten intolerant. <laughs> they're obviously P. Uh, uh, sorry, Newfie fairies. Newfie fairies. And they're obviously and then they were thrown in the oven. Um, <laughs> ta da! Look, we Who's know that? Canadian legend here. But um, I'm now expecting next week in the technical challenge, you know, <laughs> you open up the. You know, uncover whatever is hidden on the child. child. <laughs> so. Uh, she was actually using maple walnut sandwich cookies as well with maple cream cheese frosting. And she was trying to make those um, sandwich cookies look like donuts. Um, yep. Zoya. So Zoya went with Rapunzel. Yeah. Uh, black pepper and cumin. Mm-hmm. And horseradish. Yes. And she made the little... Yeah, you know, she made the a little, little horseradish. That was brilliant. Yep. And then um, cardamom and fennel spice gingerbread as well. Zoya's flavours are really cool. And I love the execution. Like, she didn't... Like they didn't show any struggles for her bacon build. Zoya had a very beautiful. Zoya had a very minimalist week in terms of coverage this week. But like the piping on the hair, for oh, example, down gorgeous. the side of the tower. And we'll mention it now because again, there wasn't much Zoya in this episode. Look, I'll flesh you out, Zoya. So we're doing a Rapunzel act as one of our group performances. I don't know when we're performing it, but essentially, we're Rapunzels that have gone a little bit insane in the tower. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They kill the prince. I Possibly. don't know. Who knows? You'll have to see it to find out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the cardamom and, and, and fennel spice gingerbread's a really cool idea too. Um, lots of cardamom in this series. Yeah. Um, Nigel. Now, Nigel went with jasmine and earl grey sugar cookies and dark coffee gingerbread. And what was he doing, you may ask? A dragon based on his gaming. Yes. So I guess, you know, we can say that's a fairy tale creature. Cause, you it, know, it, it is. I mean, look, the, D, the DM sort of creates their own world. So, yeah, what sort of – how do you go as a DM? I don't DM. You don't DM? Why not? Because I'm shit. Oh. I'm a shit player. <laughs> I have ADHD and can't focus for very long times. So I usually build glass cannons, which are basically tunes that are overpowered when it comes to attack. But, you know, as soon as, like, I don't know. Something I'll, swings. Something swings near them, they just fall dead. Um, but, you know, I'm the kind of player. <laughs> so we started a new campaign and my friend had spent a lot of time building this world. And we're just supposed to go and check out this castle. But this castle had a talking skeleton head that I decided to pack in my backpack. Yes. Turns out it, I'd unleashed like the kind of like end of world doom kind of shit going <laughs> on because I decided that a talking skeleton head would be really cool to take around. So you destroyed the whole game because you had the talking skeleton head. It, it went in a very different direction. Let's just say No that. one was anticipating that? No, no, no one was anticipating that. It, um... So what you're saying is that you're a DM's worst nightmare? Yeah. I, I don't play well, and I'm, I've am i freely admitted that and now step back. I do like Vampire the Masquerade. But did you know, now speaking of fairy tales and role-playing games, there is a role-playing game now called – oh, hold on. Let me find it because it's got a very specific name. So back in the day when Hans Christian Andersen was fanboying over Charles Dickens, yes. he got to go and live with him. Yeah. Now Charles was like, okay, how long are you going to be here? And he's like, two weeks max. <laughs> two weeks tops. You won't know I'm here. Yeah, bullshit. He, he was there for at least five weeks. Yeah. Really wore out his welcome, right? So there's, there is a role-playing game called Trapped Due to Hans Christian Andersen. Or Trapped in Your House Due to Hans Christian Andersen. <laughs> <laughs> it exists. It's on Patreon. You can play this. And now I really want to... <laughs> you can play a whole game for your... <laughs> trapped in Your Hands Christian Andersen. Yep. Um... And you know, oh god! I mean, we're finding, Nigel, an idea? Yeah, we're finding. I mean, apparently the, <coughs> the Danish are very well aware of Hans Christian Andersen and how fucking insane he was. Um, one, The Little Mermaid was a yeah. love letter to his yes. um, the guy that he was in love with. Yes. Um, and you know, basically saying, "I'm the Little Mermaid, and you're killing me because you're heterosexual and married a woman." Yes. Um, how dare you? How dare you? And the Ugly Duckling, which. which we're getting to now. Good yeah. link. You You've linked. Because Jomar's next. Woo! And Jomar talked about that, you know, because the Earl Grey pink peppercorn gingerbread that Jomar went with and those that meringue that he did for the mm. each of the duck. And he said, I, I see the ugly duckling as more of a, a coming out story. It's that idea of, you know, that duckling's not what you expect it to be. It's not what everyone wants it to be. But it's going to be something different and something, you know, better. Yeah. And look, I think a lot of us related to it growing up, particularly like those of us who are neurodivergent, like... Looking back now, like I really hard hard identified with that. Now I know I've got ADHD and stuff. It explains so much. Mm. Plus being pansexual and all mm. that kind of shit. You just feel it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit different. A little bit different. 
Um, and you know what? I might be a fucking swan that's going to bleed. Although I'm not the kind of swan that's been like kidnapped by a guy. And no, <laughs> definitely not. Um, and, and being held by a wizard. No. And yeah. We then cut quickly to Chi, mm. who is just um, making up more neon colours. Because if there's one thing that they need, it's more neon colours. Hell um, yeah. But then we cut to Andre. Um, now, Andre was making light and dark gingerbread um, for the carriage ride. Where he... he... And, 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 and then he sort of indicated that he could sing. And then just set Anne's heart a flutter and set everyone in the bloody... He was singing his billion. recipe. But Anne... Like, Zoya was losing her shit back and forward between the benches. Going, what is going on here? Yeah. Meanwhile, you can just see Anne and she stops and goes, and I need a moment. Yeah. It, that was beautiful. Yeah, it and, was fantastic. And imagine that and you're on a, 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 like a, a, a romantic ride with your friends <laughs> in Central Park. As you are. As you are. And then Andre just busts out this like, you know, beautiful voice just serenading you as you clip clopping along. And then we one of my favourite ones of the whole thing. Which Do you was, reckon he serenaded them with Pony because they were on a horse? I mean, it's or not what I... Horses by Daryl Braithwaite? Neither of those are what I call romantic. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. Have you seen Channing Tatum? I have. Anyway, <laughs> um, we got to one of my favourites, which was Christie's. So she did the Jade Rabbit, which is a Chinese story when she was going to Chinese school. Oh, I love um, it. Almond five spice sugar cookie with the black cocoa and cardamom gingerbread. And the colour was so striking and vivid. And her work with the icing and the colouring mm. and the texturing. Oh, the moon was beautiful. I loved it. Like, I, you know, when they came to the judging, they said one of her biscuits was a bit hard. hard, But the rest of it was great. The flavours were great. And, they, and like Kyla commented specifically on the quality of her design and the quality of her work. Mm -hmm. And again... That layering and texturing of the moon and the vivid purple that you got. Just the yeah. vivid nature of the colour. And look, I'm I'm kind of interested that Kyla went straight for the gold coins because like that rabbit is responsible for making like the I think like the the food of the gods yeah. in, in Chinese mythology. Yeah. So, you know, she's there essentially eating ambrosia. She's like, Yeah, I want immortality. Thank I would you. too. Anyway. Um now John was trying to make rock candy. And then they cut to Nigel, who's trying to make the dragon breathe fire by using isomalt. Now, we know that isomalt is um, terrifying in Bake Off, because nine times out of ten... It don't work. It don't work. But for someone who's only done it twice, and this is the second time, it worked amazingly. As, as Kyla said, we were the judging, you, you, this, you found your jam. Yeah, this is... It looked beautiful. And, like, like they were commenting that his dragon looked like it had seen a lot of, like, you know, battle... Who cares? I liked it. I thought it was... I liked it because it was a far more realistic sort of animal style thing rather than an overly stylized. I liked yeah. the, the, the ruggedness of the dragon. I mean, if you get a clean cut dragon, I mean, that's Pete's dragon. And we all know what... Well, yeah. Puff the magic dragon, which no, we know. No, no, no. Sorry, no, sorry. You know the rules. Sorry. Ja Don't. Jackie Paper is still visiting. Anyway. Okay, sorry. Um... So we then got um, Chi once again being the awesome person that they are helping Lauren. Mm -hmm. um, and then Rosie with one of the lines of the, of the series so far, which is, I don't drink, but this might be time to start. <laughs> she wanders over to John's bench. And goes, John, what do you got? And he's like, what do you want? And just opens the still. Um, so the judging. Uh, Rosie, they said it looked like a dollhouse. Light ginger was a very even bake. And then he starts coughing and he goes, you said this was the light ginger? <laughs> she nearly killed Bruno. Oh, you know. Um, Lauren's had great colour. The almond shortbread um, was really good. The marzipan tasted was had a really strong taste, but there was a hint of burn. The gingerbread was really good um, on hers, though. Yeah. Um, Nigel was big and ambitious. The second um, time he's ever done isomite work, which they are amazed by. The jasmine cookie was, as um, Bruno put it, ugly but tasty. Yeah. Um. Zoya, they said it was absolutely clear what the story was, and it was lovely, and the images and the piping was spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, the radish guards were incredibly clever. And and Kyla said that she could have eaten all of those radish. Oh, yeah, that was stunning. Yeah. Um, and right pepper level in the horseradish. And that's what Bruno was worried about. He's like, it could have been too much horseradish. Mm -hmm. Perfect levels. Um John, they said it was very enchanting, at which point Anne let out a little mischievous laugh in the corner that sounded <laughs> and like... now we've found out that Anne 
It's a Newfie Fairy. It's a Newfie Fairy. We won't see her next week, though, because it's bread week. So no end yeah. next week. Um, <laughs> the oat cakes were very well baked. And the, baked, and the Kranzakake base was really good as well. But they needed a bit more of the crust on the outside of that Kranzakake. Mm-hmm. Um, Chi, they said that the detail was amazing. Um, really skilled work. The Earl Grey sugar cookies were lovely. Uh, mm. And the sandwich cookie felt like a donut. Mm. No comment on the social mores of throwing the witch into the oven, however. so Look, you know, disappointing. But, I, you know, we're pushed for time and they had to keep it positive. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, you know, um, Im- the immolation of, of women, like single women living alone. Not important. <laughs> not important, apparently. <laughs> Compared to the mouthfeel of a donut. Yeah. So, Andre, <laughs> uh, they said it was missing a few parts, unfortunately. Uh, the, Earl Grey, uh, the, the subtle flavour on the light um, gingerbread... The dark was really thick, and they were worried that it wasn't going to bake, but it did bake through, and the aroma was nice. Mm-hmm. Now, you kind of you're in a bit of trouble when the feedback they're giving you is nice aroma. Um, I felt bad for him. And look, he didn't do badly, as we said. Like We, we like weeks where someone goes home and they don't do badly. Yeah. Didn't do badly. It was just someone has to go home. Yeah. Um, Joma, the design was very clever. The Earl Grey was crunchy and peppery, and they said that those meringues just vanished in your mouth once you put them in there. <laughs> Kyla eating a little duck. Yeah, was, eating a duck. I noticed how she didn't go for the ugly duckling. She's like, I will get one of the bullies. Yeah, I'll get a bully. Yeah. Um, oh, if only you have like a giant Kyla going around when you're a kid just eating your bullies. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> and then you had um, Christie's and they said it was a real showstopper and Bruno said it hijacked my eyes and my mind. Not the rest of his body. <laughs> just his eyes and mind. Um, so his liver is still out there. <laughs> His spleen wandering about. Well, good thing his liver's still out there, given the amount of booze that's in that shed. Ah, uh, and that pavilion. Um, so good snap. Hard on the t- hard on the teeth, but nice. Mm-hmm. The five spice in those coins, perfect. Yep. Um, you know why? Immortal rabbit. Immortal rabbits. Just, just Always. making it. So food of the gods. The gods would go. They they have to be perfect. Otherwise. Fuck you. Exactly. Like, like, how can we survive? Now, when they cut to the table... Um, like, if you've got to eat the same thing over and over again to remain immortal, like, one, you're a vampire, or, <laughs> but two, you'd want it to taste good, wouldn't you? Like, you would. You, like, if you had to be offered, like, if you and I were like, hey, here's some peas, and if you eat peas every once a, a year, every year, would you do that to stay immortal? Like, could you do that? I mean, I'd suffer. Yeah. I'd do it, but I wouldn't enjoy it. It's like if you had to drink your cook once a day to live. No. I'd 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 eat them like I would if there was no chewing that was necessary. If swallow I could just them? swallow them like a tablet. Yeah. Just and I can swallow tablets without water, so pee. I can do that. Yeah, yeah. Um That's how we will get around that when the When, when they ask us to pee your immortality. Um yeah. So the table. Chi and Christy were excellent and they said that Zoya also had some great flavours. Mm-hmm. Um now at this point I knew sort of where this was going because um they said that Nigel needed more finesse as the other person that might be going home next to Andre. Uh, and I'm like, that, that's not... Yeah, no. the clear storytelling there. and you know. Yeah, you got to come up with the second person. And look, Andre wasn't bad, as we said. In no way, shape or form was no. Andre bad. I felt really sorry for him because, again, you just said that, yeah, someone has to go. Yeah. And, you know, this week, unfortunately, Andre probably was the right call to go. Not because he was bad, but because everyone did so well. And yeah. he had one part that didn't work on his showstopper, so probably it. Mm-hmm. Um, Chi, once again, they are an absolute powerhouse. Oh, my God. they just pulling it out of the... Like, just, just pulling ahead of the pack. And as, 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 consistent. As, as Bruno said, has not had a bad... Bake yet has not missed on a single bake. No. They are they are really going to be someone that's going to be hard to beat. And I really hope that they start to feel like they own like mm. their their skill because it's obvious, you know, in these very clear. Yeah, it's incredibly clear. So that's biscuits and bars week. Indeed, next week. Next week is bread week. Yes, the... always a big week. It is. It's it's when we get some dough action. We get and some one of the, there's there's one a couple of the big innuendo and pun weeks. It's a big innuendo week, bread week. Mm, I really hope that Alan and Anne have been working on on that and have, are going to bring something new to. They've the been table. mastering their bread puns. Mm. I really hope so. You know, we'll always get a rise to the occasion, or you need to do that, but just something new. I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of guess. I'm not going to be critical, mm. but I am going to say that a couple of their little segues tonight didn't. Quite land, 
No, I think it would have been funnier if Alan was Red Riding Hood and Anne was. That the would have been brilliant. Hood. But it's like be like big. Yeah, <laughs> but a couple, but a couple of the other ones were, weren't quite there. It was like the. Huh. So I mean, look, Breadwork's big. Mm. Breadwork's huge for everybody involved. Yeah. Everyone has a big Breadwork. Mm. So we will be back for Breadwork, which is next week, and we yeah. we were really enjoyed Biscuits and Bars Week. Yeah. Um, it's been a fun one. It's been an interesting one. It's been a COVID free, well, free ish one. Yeah, it's been um, another strong, you know, three sets of um of challenges. We haven't really done. And, and again, what I really enjoy about this series mm. is that we're we're not really seeing any wheat bakers. It's a no, very it's strong, strong series of bakers. So yeah. long may that continue, and we will catch you all later. Ciao.